In the second section of antenatal care, now we will talk about the clinical examination and screening. In this section, we will talk about the changing demographics of pregnancy, booking visit and obstetric history, and routine screening tests. The changing demographics of pregnancy. Maternal age, increased risk of uh, associated with both extremes of maternal age. So very young age and old age or uh, advanced maternal age, like especially after 35, both have uh, consequences on the pregnancy outcome. Then the assisted reproductive technologies, they are also affected by the maternal age. More than half of the women use e-analgesia in labor, most commonly nitrous oxide followed by OPRs, then regional techniques. So assisted reproductive technologies in which we have the uh, in vitro fertilizations and different techniques used. So uh, mostly the anesthesia preferred for these is the nitrous oxide followed by opioids. The complications associated uh, with advanced maternal age, usually miscarriages are common in advanced maternal age, especially after 35. Genetic abnormalities are common, like Down syndrome is very common after 35 and 40 years of age. Complications are common with advanced maternal age, placenta previa, abruptio placenta, miscarriages, uh, chromosomal abnormalities, and there is also increased chances of uh, assisted uh, fertility uh, uh, procedures like in vitro fertilization. So more failure rate associated with advanced maternal age. Next, the booking visit, uh, observations made in first visit and monitor within 10 weeks of pregnancy. Usually with each anti -visit, antenatal visit, few steps are uh, uh, mandatory. Height and weight with each visit is important. A blood pressure checkup, examination of the urine for the UTI, for blood glucose, urine glucose, level that's important also so each visit should have some specific steps to follow uh, so height and weight of the mother then uh, if there is low body uh, mass index less than 20 risk of fetal growth retardation and perinatal mortality is important so maternal weight increased height and weight is important if it's not uh, increasing uh, according to the period gestational period then it leads to intrauterine growth retardation and if it's less than 20 percent if high body mass index more than 30 there is increased antenatal and intrapartum risk uh, the this is the they give you the uh, how much weight should be put on during pregnancy it's important and so underweight is uh, under 18.5 kilogram they uh, for them the recommended weight gain should be 12.5 to 18 kilograms Normal weight 18.5 to 24, usually recommended weight is 11.5 to 16 kilogram. Overweight, the recommended weight is 7 kilogram to 11.5 kilogram. If the uh, pregnant woman is obese, then the weight should not be 5 kilogram to 9 kilogram. So depending on how much they weigh before the pregnancy, the weight gain should be according to that um, uh, baseline. So this is the recommended weight gain during the pregnancy. Hypertension should always be, or blood pressure should be measured. If they are hypertensive, usually it leads to predated pregnancy. 
This is the schedule of routine antenatal care and what different uh, steps or different examinations should be performed on each visit. In the initial visit, 8 to 12 weeks, their first step is confirmation of pregnancy, whether the person is pregnant or not. Search for risk factors in maternal history. Look, check, do the cervical smear with where indicated, advice on general health, smoking and diet, discuss and organize screening procedures, check maternal weight, and advice on recommended folic acid and iodine supplements, dating scan, and scan for multiple pregnancies. So it's very important on the initial visit that first, the female will tell you that she has amenorrhea or missed cycle. The first step should be confirmation of pregnancy. Once confirmed, then history is very important. If it's the first pregnancy or it's priming gravida or multigravida, what was the history before, how the baby was delivered, all these are important questions. If they have any history of uh, uh, illness or any history of medication. Then in 11 to 14th week, next uh, uh, visit, screening for trisomies with the knuckle translucency scan and blood test if requested, confirm booking arrangements, offer dietary supplements. 16th week, all check all blood results, offer routine ultrasound anomaly scan. So at 16th week, a first ultrasound should be performed. 20th week, ultrasound result, blood pressure, fundal height. 24th week, uh, fetal activity usually started at about fifth month. So this is the time to ask if they feel the fetal movement. 28th week, again, blood pressure, fundal height fetal activity, blood count, and administer anti-D if RH negative, glucose tolerance test. Then at 32 weeks, again, same fundal height, fetal activity, fetal growth scan, and uh, where pattern of fetal growth is in doubt or low-lying placenta on anomaly, anomaly scan. Then at 34 weeks, routine checks again, and then second dose of anti-D if person is a female or pregnant woman is RH negative woman. Group B streptococcus is done and by rectal and vaginal swab. At 36 week, blood pressure, fundal height, fetal activity, determine presentation. Now we are getting closer to closer to the delivery every weekly visit, blood pressures, uh, blood glucose levels, fetal movements, how is the presentation, lie of the baby. All these are very exam important to do on each visit. 38 week, routine checks, fetal activity, maternal well-being, 40 weeks, routine checks, again, fetal activity, maternal well-being. Now, if it's 41 weeks, routine checks, assessment by pelvic examination. So if it's not labor pain didn't start, it's important to do pelvic examination, ultrasound. If um, uh, cervix is um, dilating, if the pelvic capacity is enough for normal delivery. This is the time they should decide obstetrician that labor delivery will be the normal vaginal delivery or they need the uh, C-section. Um, so all this is important. So antenatal visits and antenatal care is important. If, if, if during pregnancy the antenatal care is not um, Perform. Then at the end, the obstetrician cannot do anything to avoid any complications or the outcome of the pregnancy. 
obstetric history, uh, maintaining record recording. So obstetric history is important. We should ask about previous pregnancies, miscarriages and any termination of pregnancy, duration of gestation in each pregnancy and antenatal complications. Induction and duration of labor, whether it was induced or it was normal. Uh, presentation and the method of delivery, spontaneous assisted or C-section. Birth weight and gender of each infant. And then extensive perennial trauma and infections of the genital Track. All this should be asked in the obstetric history and also if there was any deep vein thrombosis or difficulties with breastfeeding. Then routine screening tests which are performed is uh, on the blood hematological investigation. Anemia is very common in pregnancy due to deficiency of iron and vitamin B12. Hemoglobin concentrations should be done routinely and full blood count is important. Women deficient in iron should be started with oral iron supplements. Blood grouping and antibody testing is also important. Uh, screening for red blood cell antibodies. Our red blood cells have antibodies present on the wall. Uh, this determines the blood groups. Then also Rh positive and Rh negative factor is important during pregnancy. Rh negative. This is the diagram that shows if the mother's blood group is Rh negative means they don't have Rh factor on the red blood cells. And baby is Rh positive because the father was Rh positive and they have the Rh factor on the blood wall, red blood cells, then what happens during pregnancy, Rh negative uh, blood goes into the baby and it forms antibodies in the blood of the uh, baby. And then if not treated in the next pregnancy, it can cause destruction of the fetal blood cells if the same scenario occurs again. Mother is Rh negative and baby is Rh positive. So screening is very important to find out the Rh factor. Should be performed at the first visit and then repeated at about 28th week gestation. ABO antibodies are also performed in the fetus and a newborn because it can cause problems in the newborn baby. So uh, uh, testing for ABO incompa incompatibilities and RH incompatibility is important uh, first in the beginning and then at 28 week of gestation. And then use of anti-D immunoglobulins if there is um, a risk of developing uh, RH incompatibilities or ABO incompatibility. Risk of developing anti-D antibodies. NTD antibodies affect on fetus. It causes anemia, high drops, neonatal anemia, jaundice, carnictrous, or fetal death. So as I mentioned before, when the antibodies are formed in the baby, uh, those antibodies cross the placenta and enters into the mother blood. So in the next pregnancy, those antibodies can cross the placenta and cause destruction of the blood in the fetus and cause all these complications. To treat this, anti-D immunoglobulin is important. First is given in about uh, eight weeks of pregnancy and then it's repeated at uh, 28th week gestation and then at about 34, 36 week gestation. So it's important to prevent the complications.
And this is also done when there is uh, any sensitizing event like normal delivery, miscarriages, if there is termination of pregnancy, and it should be given to uh, women delivered a RH positive infant. So this is the anti-D immunoglobulin should be given to a mother who has ABO and RH factor incompatibilities to prevent the complications. So that was all about this section. Thank you for watching Scardia.com.